So today we are going to be taking a look at the Mineshaft interior. This is a new interior added in the version 60 update for Lethal Company. We are currently on Vow because it has a 99% chance to spawn this interior. And so go there if you want to check it out and mess around with it. So first I'm going to go over the general layout. So we're going to start off by going over the layout. For the main entrance, you will always find an elevator that will lead you down into the facility. In here, you can often find keys, but no scrap. So once you go down the elevator, you will be in the factory area. The factory area will always be the place where main or fire exit leads to. It won't ever be right in a cave. Typically, you have two factory areas, one on either side of the caves. Now, if you're lucky, you have fire exit and main on opposite ends. But a lot of the times you can also find fire exit and main entrance on the same side of the cave system. There can also be times where only one factory area spawns and not on the other side, so it's just the factory and the cave system. In the factory area, scrap can spawn in basically every tile. This goes the same for the cave system. So pretty much you're just going to be holding a wall or just roaming around and trying to look at every dead end for scrap. Entities in the factory section will still spawn from vents. However, in the caves, they will spawn from these cracks right here with these little dark marks. It appears that the entire cave system is interconnected, so there's only one cave system for the entire map. Similar to the mansion tile, you can use a door trick to find your way back to the elevator. The doors will always open away from the elevator, so door opens this way, I know that the elevator is going to be somewhere that direction. You can also use the door handle. If the door handle is on the right, then you are going away from the elevator. If the door handle is like this, on the left, then you are going towards the elevator. This rule also applies to the fire exit side, if fire exit spawns opposite a main. When you go to a door and open it, it will open away from the fire exit. So, door handle on the right, leading you away. Door handle on the left, leading you towards the fire exit. The only time that door trick isn't helpful is if there is something similar to a loop like this, and there's a doorway. Say we have a doorway right here. If I open it this way, it could be telling me to go this way or this way just because it loops around to itself. So if the door has a loop around to itself, then it's not a very helpful door to use. Another tip for navigation is that the cave entrances will always be marked with the blue light. As you can see, I open this door, cave entrance is here, there doesn't have to be a door here. The light will always be there if there's a cave entrance, there is nothing for the cave exits. Here is a good map shown on screen that shows how the generation works. There is a main facility where the main entrance will spawn and potentially the fire exit. There is the cave system, and that connects you to most likely which will spawn a secondary facility. Secondary facility doesn't have to spawn, but it is common. The secondary facility can have the fire exit, but isn't guaranteed. And shout out to Eevee for making this image. There are a couple things to talk about in the cave interior. There are two death pits. The first one is just a hole. It's usually at the bottom of this drop here, so just make sure you don't run straight into it when you're dropping down off this type of ledge. The other is alongside of this ramp, and you can jump over it pretty easily, but what you can also do is run over it with any weight just on this side here. So here I am three gold bars and a cache. I am the max weight I can be. So obviously I'm not going to make a jump, but if I just run along the side here, and then when I get to the end, just jump once, I make it across. You can do the exact same thing on the way back. If I grab this stuff, I go across on the side here, get to the end, jump, I'm good. One last cool feature in the caves here is that you can actually go underwater to access new parts of the cave. So when you see this water, it's not just a dead end. You can actually crawl down it, Navigate through it, use pockets for air, and you can access different parts of the cave for it because of it.
There are two small tips that can help you navigate throughout the cave layer. So this little bulge in the wall will always mean like a three-way tile. So as you can see, there's one path here, one path here, one path that way. Same thing with this one. One path that way, that way, and this way. And you know that behind this little bulge in the rock, there is not going to be a pathway behind it. So that can just help you speed up your looting process. And whenever you see this kind of jagged edge of the rock, as you can see, there's kind of like four of them here. You have one, two, and then close here, three, four. This is kind of considered a four-way tile, but a lot of the times, one of the ways is just blocked off. But this just kind of shows that there can be four directions to go in. For a spider, there's a bunch of cheese spots you can use. You can use the orange boxes, you can use those, you can jump on these generators here and use them, you can use these little AC systems, and you can use these pipes. And from all these spots you're able to hit the spider and just kill it. So top of the elevator, you're safe from all entities, however you can't actually kill anything from them. To get on top, you just jump on the button here, and then jump on top of the elevator. If you're able to get on top of the doors, it is another safe spot. However, you need another object nearby in order to get on top of it. For the man-eater, you can still drop them down the elevator shaft. Uh, I'm not sure if this is just Imperium messing with things since Seeker said he patched this, but you should still be able to do it. Another thing you can actually do now for coils is, if you just look down, they can't attack you. Like, no matter what way you're facing, if you're looking down, you're fine, all the way down. But also, when you get them in the elevator, you can just wait for them to turn off with that new cooldown mode. So we're just going to stand here, you see he turns off, and then you can just walk through him and send him up. For Jester, you can do something similar. You can get in the elevator, go up with it. It's grooving. And then to get out once you're at the top, you can shove yourself through the ladder here by placing it, just pushing yourself out. You just place it at your feet and walk forward into the wall. It'll push you through the elevator. Then the jester can be trapped here at main. And for my last tip, in order to deal with hoarding bugs taking your loot, you can put it on top of the elevator by jumping up and placing it, or you can just jump on the button, jump on the elevator, and place it up here. And the hoarding bugs can't get it. If you enjoyed these tips and tricks in the mineshaft interior, please make sure to subscribe. It means a lot to me. And have a great day. Peace. Is that a mimic? Oh my god, I'm cooked. Why is it just sprinting? It's just full sprinting!